In this video, I want to show you how to replace the radiator on this Ford F-150. Let's get started. Just as a disclaimer, we're going to have to disconnect the AC condenser. So you're going to have to get your refrigerant properly and professionally drained, evacuate that from the system. You don't want to open any lines with the system under pressure. Let's get started. To drain the coolant, you want to go on the passenger side over the frame rail at the front and you'll see the petcock right there. Unfortunately for us, it's broken. So there's no way I can undo it and let the coolant drain you'd have a little wing nut typically on there or a 19 millimeter cutout. So you'd want to loosen that and then coolant will come out of there. Because that's broken, unfortunately, I have to just drain the coolant by disconnecting the lower radiator hose. If you go on through the driver's side fender well, you'll see this clip on the lower radiator hose with a pick. You're gonna have to pry it off of here. This clip is what locks in the radiator hose. Okay, here we go. Try to get your pick around it. Slide it away. Looks like it wants to go up. So I'm going to sneak my hand in there and grab it. There it is. Set it aside. I have a collection bucket underneath, hoping to catch all the fluid that comes out of here. A lot of times these are fairly stuck on here. There we go. This one's starting to move. And it just broke free. Pull it away slowly, and we'll just let this drain and uh, hopefully we uh, don't make too much of a mess. A lot of times draining it by the lower radiator hose makes a mess, but if you just let it take its time, then you should be good. It's been about five minutes. I think enough has drained to where now we can pull this off, slide it sideways, and there it is. A lot more coolant will be stuck inside the hose. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna try and drain some of it now. And the rest will just have to stay in there. And I'll just leave the hose right there. And now we can continue with our job. I'm gonna leave the buckets also underneath it because it will keep draining over time. So that way it'll catch most of the fluid. On the driver's side next to the headlight, we have to remove this clip here. I'm gonna put some pressure behind it. You can't pop it out right away, but what you can do is take a Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew the center piece. And the pressure behind it is so that these threads can grab in. A lot of times they're stripped out. Pull this out. Flip this to the side, and this exposes pretty much everything we'll need to disconnect in this area. However, for filming purposes, I'm going to pop this out of the AC bracket. Just uh, remove the two clips. You don't actually have to do this, but it'll make it a lot easier for me to show you what I'm doing. At the bottom of the radiator, we have this line for the transmission cooler. So squeeze the clamp. You can use pliers or whatever else you have that'll squeeze on this clamp. Sometimes they're a little stuck in place. This one's pretty tough, so I'm actually gonna just switch to my hose clamp pliers. These hose clamp pliers will squeeze it and lock it open so I can pull this hose off, give it a couple twists, and it should slide off of the radiator. Okay, so it looks like these pliers are able to squeeze it the most. Okay, so the hose clamp is off. Now we just have to slide the hose off of here. Now just slide the hose off. Sometimes you can use a little pry bar to help you pry it off. Just make sure you don't damage it. Fluid will leak out, keep that in mind. At the top of the radiator, you have a very similar hose. This one goes to the top of the transmission cooler, but regardless, we have to take this one out also. So squeeze on the clamp, pull it off of here. This one came off a little bit easier. Move it out of the way and Pull the hose off. If you need to pry it, be very gentle. Okay, set this aside. We have to unhook the AC condenser from the radiator and all that entails is pressing in these tabs, lifting up the AC condenser and sliding it out. Very difficult to see, but there's another hook up here right above this upper transmission cooler hose off the radiator. Just make sure it unhooks from there as well. And of course, do the same to the other side. Unclip that so we can slide it upwards. There we go. This should give us more movement. Yep, make sure that is completely unhooked. Let's remove the upper radiator hose, grab some pliers, squeeze it, move it aside. This clamp has the ability to lock. 
be very gentle with it. You don't want it to accidentally let go while you're holding it. So now break this hose free. Sometimes you'll need the pliers to give it a wiggle, but be gentle with it. Don't crush it. You don't want to damage the hose. There we go. That just broke free. Don't have to squeeze very much. Take this off. There shouldn't be any coolant in here, but sometimes there is some still lingering in the hose, so be careful. For me, it looks like there wasn't. I'm going to put this hose out of my way. Now we have to unhook the fan shroud, lift it up and off of the radiator. And you want to make sure you lift it up enough to unhook it off the bottom. It's going to be very difficult to see. I'll show you in a little bit, but basically it's the same type of hooks that we had for the AC condenser bracket. You want to lift this up, back, and down. And you want to make sure to do this on both sides also. Here on the driver's side, let's disconnect the overflow hose. And this may or may not be necessary for you. I'm going to disconnect this upper hose off the AC condenser. This is for the power steering cooler. And I'm going to do this because this is kind of in the way of the hooks on the radiator. So I want to get this out of my way so I can have a clear shot at the, uh, at the radiator. Get the hose off. I'm going to leave the clamp over here for now. This hose is connected to this line, so we can move this out of the way now. Take this off at this point, set it aside safely so you can reuse it. Let's remove the cap so we can install it on the new one. And here we go. At this point, we just have to maneuver it out of here. On the passenger side, we have to disconnect this upper AC condenser line. And just so you know, when you have the refrigerant evacuated, sometimes there will be a vacuum in the system. So so there is a possibility for a hissing noise. By the way, this is a 10 millimeter bolt. So don't be alarmed about the hissing noise. That's normal. It's not pressure, it's vacuum. There we go. Now with this AC line out of the way, we can have more space here for the radiator. Problem was that bracket down there doesn't have enough room. The wiring harness for the horns, make sure you push that underneath that radiator mount and then the AC line can be pushed further back to clear the uh, radiator. And here it comes. And there's the radiator. Before we get the new radiator in, I wanted to mention that it has two rubber pieces right here on these radiator supports and we'll have to transfer these over from the old one. That is of course, unless they stayed inside the radiator support. A lot of times they do, sometimes they don't. For me, they did not. So once you pull them off of the old one, slide them right on. And of course you'd want to do this to both sides. Now grab the radiator and carefully slide it down. Pay attention to the fins that you don't damage them. So move anything out of the way. That needs to be moved out of the way. Most likely it's going to be the fan shroud that's going to hold you up. Looks like it's mostly seated. I'll show you a close-up in a second of exactly what you want to look out for. But I think I got it. Yep, it's seated on its mount on both sides. No damage to anything, which is perfect. You definitely want to be very careful of the fins. They are very delicate and just a little stab on even a corner of this plastic piece is uh, going to perforate it and then you'll need to get a new one. So here's what you're looking for. This is the driver's side of the radiator. That right there is the mount that sits on this part of the radiator support. Then it's hard to see, but you have the passenger side over here, right behind the shield. If I lift up on the radiator, you can see how it sits perfectly in its groove. And now with the radiator seated, it's difficult to show you, but that hook right there needs to actually hook into the fan shroud. You can see it has a tab sticking out of it. It's difficult to see. This is the best view I can give you just because of the limited space, but 
that tab, like I said, needs to hook into this hook. And there's one like this on both sides. Also, since you can see the petcock right here, this is a good reminder to check it before you finalize the installation to make sure that it's nice and tight. I already did, but always check it on the new radiator. And what I want to do now is grab this fan shroud and it's got two tabs here that need to hook up and over the radiator at the same time as hooking the lower part in, which once again is difficult for me to show you, but it's very easy to get it back in place because it naturally wants to sit up against the radiator. There we go. Hook this over, hook this over. So these are the two tabs you're aiming for at the top right here. They just need to latch onto the radiator and now we have to latch in the same way the AC condenser. That's the one that locks in. Okay, make sure that's locked on both sides, which it is. So everything is perfectly situated at this point. Let's get this hose reconnected at the top. This is for the transmission cooler. Press that on all the way. Grab some pliers, whatever fits in here. And you wanna make sure you put this clamp back where it belongs. I try to line it up with where it came from because the hose is most likely going to be somewhat molded to this clamp and putting it back where it was ensures the best seal possible. Right about there. Make sure that hose is seated, bottomed out all the way. As you can see, there's a little bit of hose past the end of the clamp there and the fitting ends here. So I'm right in the middle of that fitting, which is perfect. Let's do the same to this lower hose. Slide it on all the way, grab the clamp and put that on. Back to the passenger side, let's reconnect this AC line, replace the O-ring if necessary, make sure that gasket's lined up, press it on all the way by hand. You don't wanna press that in with the bolt because it can damage the O-ring. Slide the bolt back in, make sure it threads on smoothly, and let's tighten it up, make it nice and snug. Okay, that's bottomed out. I'm gonna go about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. That's gonna ensure that this is clamped down properly and you wanna let the O-ring do the sealing, not the bolt. So basically the bolt is just here to hold these two together. You don't wanna crank it down too much because this is all aluminum and it will strip out the threads or break the bolt potentially. And then you're in for bigger problems. So you just wanna use the bolt to clamp these down. The O-ring is gonna do the job. Make sure all the wires are where they belong and they're not pinched or caught anywhere. And let's put this back, this uh, shield. It's important that you do because this directs airflow into the radiator. And if you don't have this, air will rush past it instead of through it. Right, do your best to press it on here. It's difficult to reach. Let's get the shield on this side reconnected. It's got two push clips that go into the AC bracket at the top and at the bottom. And then at the top on the outside, it goes into the headlight over there. Put the outer part in and then the center. Now let's get this power steering line into the top of the AC condenser. Reconnect that, slide it in all the way. I have my clamp already on here, ready to go. All right, so clamp is on, but the hose needs to get bottomed out completely. So I'm gonna hold the clamp and try to wiggle this hose on. There we go. I'm using the line to apply pressure to the hose. Okay, that's pretty much where it was before. So I'm gonna set the clamp back down, perfect. While we're here, let's reconnect the overflow hose. And I'm not going to put the radiator cap in yet because of course we have to fill it with coolant through here. But what we can do is reconnect the radiator. Right here, had a 13 millimeter headed bolt. Line that up with the mounting bushing. Try to thread it on by hand as much as you can. And I'm just gonna use my ratchet to tighten it. Before I completely bottom this out though, I'm gonna pause right here. I'm gonna put the other side bolt in so that I know the radiator is lined up on both. But having this one partially started makes it a lot easier to line up the other one. This one's a little bit easier to reach and it lines up perfectly. So that's great, start it in by hand. This one starts in. Now we can tighten up both. I'll just continue with this one since I'm here now. There we go, that's bottomed out. Another eighth of a turn, that's it. You just want this to hold the radiator onto this bushing. Don't crush anything. Same on this side. You don't want to damage the radiator by crushing it completely. All right, that's nice and snug. Radiator is mounted. 
Let's resecure the fan shroud onto the radiator. Start the two eight millimeter bolts back through. Move this around as needed to line up the bolt hole. Looks like it has to come up a little bit. Now let's just tighten this up. You don't want to tighten this past the point where it's snug because it can actually break the fan shroud or worst case the radiator where the, the fitting is with that J-nut and you don't want to damage either of those. Those need to be tightly secured onto each other. Okay, so that's snug right there. Give it a little extra. Perfect. And we do the same to the other side. Let's resecure this fuse box up on top here. Line it up. Start in all of the mounting bolts or I guess screws. They, uh, pretty, they're pretty coarse threaded. Tighten them all up. So with that tight, if you had another cover that went up here, I don't, mine's missing, you would put that on at this point. If not, let's fill up the cooling system. Let's put the upper radiator hose in, and this clamp is locked in the open position. To unlock it, you can stick a screwdriver. Be careful, don't put your fingers there, but basically you pry down on this, up on this, and boom, unlocked and clamped on. Now let's reconnect the lower radiator hose. Before we do that, we're going to have to put back this clip here. Okay, so there we go. That's installed. Now, as you slide the hose on, it should click into place, and that's how you know it's locked in. Okay, that's it. That's locked in there. It's sealed up. That locking clip is seated, so let's get some coolant in this. To fill the cooling system, I have this funnel here that allows me to not only fill it without spilling it, but it also helps me bleed it because this is now the highest point in the cooling system, so air will naturally want to rise to the top. Having said that, refer to your owner's manual if you're unsure of what type of coolant to use and how much of it it takes, and put in enough coolant until there's some built up in this funnel. After you've filled it to the top, Remove the funnel. Once you've filled it, leave the funnel on with coolant in here and run the vehicle. You'll notice bubbles are going to come up. That's exactly what you want. Air is being pushed out and coolant is being drawn in. After it reaches operating temperature and the coolant stops bubbling in the funnel, you're going to want to let this cool down. Don't touch it. After it has cooled down, plug the funnel, remove it, and put on the radiator cap. And now with everything done, if you wanted to take it for a test drive, go ahead, make sure it doesn't overheat, make sure you have no more air bubbles in the system and you feel heat through your vents, have the heat set to high, so the highest possible temperature, AC off if possible, and make sure the blower is on low so it doesn't take out too much heat out of the engine. You want this to warm up and push all the air out of the system. At this point, you would go back to your local shop and have the AC system professionally recharged. It is important that the proper amount of refrigerant makes its way back in so that you can actually have it functioning properly. If it's too much, it'll overpressurize and it'll shut off. And if it's too little, it won't work very well. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.